opportunity for barley farmers in Alberta has really become way more positive. I think people are looking outside of the box more. It's huge for us. The Chinook Arch Growers is a group of 15 uh, growers from across a wide swath of Alberta. Handpicked to generate a fantastic product like the barley that we grow here in Alberta. Then we can take that product to an end user and say, what can you do with it? That's fantastic. Tony McGee, the founder of Loganese Brewing Company, myself, Carissa, his wife, and our master brewer went up and met some farmers to talk about this uh, revolutionary idea of a brewer wanting to talk directly to barley growers. We felt that it was an important uh, step um, as a brewer to create relationships directly with the folks who are growing the barley. Tony McGee said to Leon, he said, Leon, start negotiating a contract because we want to work with the farmers of Alberta. And I'm over here with the rest of our family and I said, Tony, you have to understand how important this is to us to be able to have the opportunity to talk to you as an end user that wants to buy our product. And that's where the, the actual partnership got named, based on that night, sitting around with the, uh, with the Hilton family, seeing uh, an actual Chinook arch blowing fair winds onto our idea of uh, direct farmer relationship. You know, there's more than just barley. Like there's, there's stories behind every family that it comes from. Like, you know, we're all different, but we all grow the same thing, and in the end, we all come together. We are top producers. We were handpicked for this task of fulfilling this contract obligation. I feel we could grow the best barley in the world for a number of reasons. We have a good climate for barley growing. We get cool evenings, typically cooler summer days, and barley likes that. We have a decent amount of rainfall so that we get an opportunity to grow good crop with plump kernels. That's what we felt was the, the quality that our brew house has always run on. You know, we, we use the weather to our advantage as much as we can. We try to work with Mother Nature as much as we can, but at the end of the day, it takes a lot of good farmer know-how and it takes a lot of really good technology and best management practices. And those are all the things that we bring to the table. Being part of the Chinook Arch group has allowed me to access more information from other farmers rather than just my neighbor down the road or my cousin or, a, or someone else that I know. I can now access information across Alberta. We're so spread out. That helps to provide, uh, I think, a tremendous diversification of risk. Now when we're linking to each other, it has quite often been a lot of back and forth conversations that really help us to become even better because we're drawing on experiences and events and relationships, we really have united under a common goal to produce the very best barley for this group and we've made some big commitments to do that. With every farm's reinvestment, whether it be aeration bins and storage and grain dryers and handling systems and whatnot, that we're actually putting money back in. As a group, we've spent well over $8 million so that we know we have the quality of malt that they need and they expect from us. We start harvesting barley in August and September, but we're still holding some old crop. And certain years we'll hold even excess amount of crop just to make sure that we have that commitment to Lagunitas. This is one of the most exciting things I've been part of because I can actually see where my product goes. I know the people that are using it. I actually meet people that are consuming it at the far end of the spectrum. And these people are also so passionate and so skilled at what they do, I think it draws people in. People want to know who's making their beer. And you're building brand. Yeah, we're building our own brand too, but we're building their brand as well. For us, Lagunitas is still Lagunitas. Lagunitas hasn't changed. Craft brewers are starting to get a little bit more market share. And as businesses, the macros are looking at that and saying, okay, we need to adapt. And one of the ways they're adapting is they're, they're buying up some of these craft breweries. They're saying, we bought you because you're a great business. Keep doing what you're doing. And as long as they're allowed to stay true to their roots, that's what's gonna to continue to make them successful and it won't disrupt the industry. Everyone's pride shows in the way their farms look, their, you know, everything is very put together. It's family pictures, it's, you know, history. It's going to create, I think, opportunity, enthusiasm, and some new ideas. And they've set the bar high here in Alberta for people to look for an opportunity to link in with an end user 
and make a really good deal that makes sense to the end user and really makes sense to the family farm operations. So it's a real source of pride there and, and, and uh, at the end of the day people deal with people and just knowing where your product's going is, is a whole new experience. We've uh, really enjoyed the relationship. They're a great friendly bunch. It feels good to get up in the morning every day and go grow barley for a company that has uh, a mutual interest. You know exactly where this barley's going, where it's ending up, and you can be proud of the actual end product. So it just brings a, a heightened relationship and, and enthusiasm all the way through the chain. Beyond the, the business of us getting together and, and making a business model that was the first of its kind in the barley world. It's gone so much deeper than that and it's become this really incredible family. 